perfect. Y'all, so YouTube, YouTube didn't want me to be great this morning, okay? YouTube did not want me to be great this morning. So I already have an account with YouTube and um, I have subscribers and everything. But apparently when you become eligible to go live on YouTube, <laughs> they want you to um, get access, like pro basically get a verification code 24 hours in advance. I didn't know y'all. So YouTube did not allow me to be great, but any classes I do moving forward, we'll be doing it on YouTube. So now that I have sent them the access, we'll be doing it on YouTube, okay? So, this live most likely will not be saved on Instagram, but once I save it, it will be accessible through YouTube because I'm going to upload it on YouTube after I you know, make my clips and my snips and things like that, okay? So, y'all ready to get into this masterclass? What I need y'all to do is do not drop comments in questions in the comments, okay? I'm going to do this teaching first. And then once we're completed with the teaching, then you guys are free to ask questions. I don't want you guys to confuse people in the comments. Um, I tell you guys all the time, my teaching is different from everybody else's uh, teaching. So it would not be, um, it would not be saved on Instagram, but most likely once I make my edits, edits is going to be uploaded on YouTube. So, all right. So ask y'all questions in the question box after we finish coaching okay so good afternoon or good morning it's actually morning on my time good morning to you guys um i appreciate you guys for being here live with me make sure that you guys share your share this information out to a couple of people because i'm going to be doing a full master class teaching when it comes to business credit business credit is not rocket science okay it's not rocket science it's just that people are not familiar with what business credit is how it works who needs it why you need it and that is absolutely my job today to be able to go over that with you guys because we have so many new people on the page i'm um, show you guys different ways to use your business credit because a lot of you guys are not familiar about how to use your business credit when it comes to funding when it comes to creating multiple streams of income and that's what i'm going to do okay so for those of you who are not familiar with who i am my name is patrice s jordan i am the president of her secret vault i teach entrepreneurs how to build business credit using ein only and create multiple streams of income with that being said what is business credit okay business credit is the ability for your business to stand alone by itself you should not have to pg anything when it comes to building business credit let me take these comments off okay you guys should not have to uh you guys should not have to PG anything in the world of business credit. You have to build business credit where your business can stand alone. A lot of you guys are new and your PG in vehicles, your PG in Airbnbs, because you guys are not familiar with the process of how to do this without PGing it. And this is what one of my responsibility is as a coach is to teach my community how to be able to build business credit without utilizing their social. Okay. So first, that's what business credit is. Your business has to be able to stand alone. Why is business credit needed? Everyone who owns a business should have business credit. You would not have systems like Dun & Bradstreet, NAB, Experian, Equifax if business credit was not important. You would not, be, um, you would not know things like the SBA loans, when they specifically focus on the DUNS number or the uh, UEI number, as you guys are familiar with the, UE, with the UEI number being a new number. Business credit, everyone needs it. Business credit helps you fund your business without using your personal money. A lot of us as brand new businesses, um, startup businesses, um, medium-sized businesses, large businesses, we use our own money to fund our business because we're not familiar with what business credit is and how it works and why we need it. 
okay? So, few things that you guys need as business owners in order for you guys to start building business credit correctly. The number one thing is that you guys need to have a business that's structured properly. Without the foundation of your business being put together properly, this is not going to work. Um, on the no PG side, it can absolutely work on PG side, but PG is personal guarantee, meaning that you are personally guaranteeing the lenders that if something happens with your business, that you're going to be responsible for paying them back. So you can absolutely operate that way, but the way that I coach is through no PG. So some of you guys have asked before about when it comes to vehicle, is it okay to PG vehicles? Would it show up on my personal credit? The only time those things show up on your personal credit is when you default. So if you default on your car node, you need to re they need to repo your car, you are not responsible because you PG it. But as a business owner, remember, you want to put yourself in a position where you own nothing but you control everything. What do I mean by own nothing and control everything? What I mean by that is that the business has its own EIN, just like you have your own social security number. The business hired you to do a job. Your job as a president of this company is to make sure the business is making money, you're filing taxes, you're making sure that you put the proper people in place to let this business go forward. Same thing when it comes to business credit vendors. You put business credit vendors in place as the business president, right? Because a lot of you guys are big on ownership. Oh, I own, I own, I own, I own, I own. And that's where a lot of you guys find yourself in hot water. Allow the business to operate on its own. Allow the business to stand alone on its own by utilizing the business EIN, not your social security number. Your business has its own number. Your business EIN is like the business social security number, right? Just like you have your social security number and you're an individual person and you stand alone by yourself. Your business has to be able to do the same when it comes to building business credit, okay? So business credit, let's jump straight into that. Why is business credit needed as I stated before? Business credit is needed so you guys can become fundable. So in that way you guys are able to build a business that's going to be able to make you money, not lose you money. Separate yourself from the personal liability of your business by not attaching your social, right? Um, for instance, a lot of you guys right now are utilizing your personal funds in order for you guys to be able to fund your business. Not knowing that you guys should be that you guys should have a system in place when it comes to doing things like that. What do I mean by that? Anytime you're utilizing personal funds to go into your business, you should absolutely be keeping track of that. You should be writing a check to the business that says owner's loan. So you write the check out to the business, for instance, Her Secret Vault, I will write a check out to Her Secret Vault for my personal account, right? For my personal account and in the memo of that uh, check, I will write owner's loan. The reason I write owner's loan is because once the business starts making money, even if it's through OPM, right, other people's money, and I'm going to go into that a little bit deeper later on, but even when it comes to OPM, other people's money, once the business starts making money, the business now pays you back as the fund, so you're basically the lender. You, me personally, Patrice Jordan, I have my own social security number. I lend my business her secret vault that has a tax ID number, allows them to file taxes. However, I lend my business money to be able to help the business grow and scale. I am entitled to that money back because once the business starts making money, you're entitled to get that money back. So always make sure that you guys have owner's loan. Write a check to yourself from your business and that way you guys can benefit both ways of making money when it comes to your business. You get the money back that you put in and then the business is making money when it comes to using OPM, okay? So that's a very important uh, point that I wanted to have you guys understand. Stop just funding your business just to fund your business. Fund your business with a purpose. 
always think how can I get my money back from this business when I'm utilizing my personal funds in order for me to operate that business. Okay, now let's jump into OPM. OPM is other people's money. What is considered other people's money? Everything that you guys do in business is other people's money, okay? One of the things that I teach my students to do is not just to get vehicles under their business, no PG, but how to utilize other people's money to be able to run those businesses. I'm not just teaching you guys to get a vehicle, I'm teaching you guys how to run the business as well and utilize OPM. One of the sites that I have my students use, most of you guys are already familiar with that, is called Toro. Toro is not the only platform when it comes to getting OPM, allowing other people to rent your vehicle and being able to make that, have, the, have them pay for the vehicle while you, you know, you have this vehicle, if it's a luxury vehicle, somebody else is paying your car note and insurance. But Toro is not the only platform. I have several platforms in my course, which is a five-day vehicle challenge, that I teach my students how to allow the vehicle to work for them, not against us. Same exact thing with when it comes to getting corporate leasing. Corporate leasing, aka Airbnb. Everybody's familiar with Airbnb. Airbnb is not the only platform when it comes to OPM for you to be able to make money. There are several other platforms besides uh, Airbnbs, but people talk about the same platforms because people don't go into details. In my 2022 Airbnb challenge, I teach you guys other options besides just Airbnbs to be able to put the property up to let it work for you. I also teach you guys how to utilize Amazon. Amazon, there's a hack when it comes to Amazon. Amazon has something called pay by invoice. I talk about that a lot, okay? Amazon has something called pay by invoice. Utilize OPM, other people's money, in order for you guys to furnish your Airbnbs. And then when you start getting rentals, you start getting guests, you allow the guests now to pay your rent, your lights, your light bill, for those of you who may have gas bill, depending on if it's a house versus an apartment. And then you can utilize the extra funds for you to pay back your Amazon pay by invoice. And now you have that additional funds in your pocket where you're growing and scaling a business utilizing OPM, other people's money, okay? Same exact thing when it comes to condos, um, buying houses. The purpose of buying houses for me is more so to use them as investment properties. I use them for like content studios because content studios is a big thing right now. Um, I use them for content studios, even with my rentals, with my Airbnb rentals. I, I, I look for rentals that can be utilized as content studios as well. A big backyard, um, a nice side area where people can come in and do content. So it's not just about utilizing it only for Airbnb. Think outside of the box. Think about putting together events. Airbnb has this thing called, um, what is it called on Airbnb? Airbnb experience. Airbnb experience. You can host wine events. You can do game nights. You can do, um, like for those of you who do, you know, play spades, you know, play chess. Um, you can do wine and cheese event. Depending on the state that you're in, you can utilize those properties to work for you, not against you. So if you guys are not familiar with Airbnb um, experience, take a look on Airbnb once we get off this live and look and see what options they have for Airbnb experience. As long as you're providing an experience in your city, Airbnb would allow you to do it. So it's like hosting an event. For instance, for those of you who are in my vehicle challenge right now and you guys are doing like the sprint events, you guys can host tours, or, for instance, Vegas. Vegas is one of those places where you guys can host tours. You put up an Airbnb experience on Airbnb saying that uh, Monday, Tuesdays, or Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, those are the most busiest times for tours. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that you are putting together a tour of Vegas. So look for little hole in the wall places in whatever state that you're in and take the tourists and them along these journeys where you're utilizing OPM, 
right? They're paying your gas, they're paying your car notes, they're paying your insurance. Because you get a bus full of people that you're charging, let's say you're charging $50, $60 a person. $50, $60 a person. You get a Sprinter van full of people, depending on the type of Sprinter van that you do. That's an easy uh, two, three thousand dollars, two hours, right? Two hours. There's other things like um, for those of you who have younger children and you're in the and you're in the Atlanta area, there's things such as like scooter pickups where you can create a business for your children. Give them a vehicle where they can go pick up scooters around around the Atlanta area. There's many other states that do it as well, such as like New York, how New York has the, the city bikes. Um, maintenance, they need people to check on the bikes if something happens. Utilize everything that you guys have as a business owner to help you make money. A lot of you guys don't think outside of the box. I need you guys to start thinking outside of the box when it comes to using OPM, other people's money. The banks use other people's money. When you guys go put money in the bank, the bank is utilizing your money to, to pay somebody else to get a house. Because your dollar in the bank is 10 times for them. Hence why we moved over to infinite banking. Infinite banking is becoming your own bank. We have decided to become our own bank through putting our money in life insurance. We get so much more for our money when we put in a life insurance and we don't have to worry about the bank you the bank not getting giving us any interest and then utilizing our money to give to mortgage people to be able to buy houses give you know so this is how the bank really use your money when you put it in the bank not saying the bank is worthless but look at these a lot of these foreign countries not necessarily my country but in the chinese cultures they do not really put their money in the bank. Um, most of them at the time have where their money is being stored under a mattress or they keep their money in, a, in one person's house. They go to that person's house and they withdraw their money from them when they need money. So they don't have to worry about going over $10,000 and the bank says, oh, we need to have a manager override this. Oh, we cannot approve this transaction. There's so many different things that the banks do when it comes to giving us our own money, which is crazy. The bank has a limit on how much money you can withdraw from your own account every single day. For instance, I have Navy Federal. One of the one of Navy Federal's me personally issues I feel. Navy Federal is a great bank when it comes to doing a lot of different things because their job is to help military people, you know, that's in in that area. But you cannot take out a certain amount of your own money from the ATM. You got $2 million in the bank, in any bank, you have to go into the bank. So late night, if you feel like doing something late night and you go to the bank to take out $10,000, $20,000, you can't take it out from the ATM. They're limiting what we can do with our own money. Hence why we, again, decided to become our own banks because it just works better in our favor. We don't have to worry about all the loopholes and all the extra things that the bank is, is doing and at the same time, it allows us to create generational wealth for our children's children when, you know, God forbid that time comes, it allows us to create generational wealth. This is how the rich has been getting richer. Okay? So utilize OPM when it comes to everything that you guys are doing. Just think outside of the box. Now, business credit. Business credit is built one way. Okay? One way, when it comes to no PG business credit, is built the same exact way. Five different tiers. I know a lot of you guys on my page have been listening to like a lot of different coaches and a lot of the things that I say is going to contradict what those coaches are saying. Not saying that they are wrong. The difference with me is that everything that I teach, I've done it myself. I do it myself. I brought you guys... I think maybe about a month ago, dispensaries. I'm actually doing dispensary under business credit. I have not launched that course because I needed to have everything work out for me first. And that way I can learn any loopholes, any tricks, and so I can come back to my community and say, okay, let me put together a class for you guys correctly. 
not just putting a class to say, okay, I'm going to get some money. When I launched my vehicle challenge, I had already had several vehicles under my business. When I launched my Airbnb challenge, I already had my Airbnbs under my business. So it allowed me to put into my course all the loopholes or all the extra stuff that I was getting from the dealerships or getting from the uh, corporate leasing. On, it allowed me to put that into my course where I can work around all the extraness. So any of my course that you guys take, you guys will see that I'm super detailed, super, super, super details. I give you guys the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows when it comes to doing any business. Okay. So that's the difference. I think that allows me to stand out from everybody else is that I'm actually doing the work myself. People do the work, but not extensive where they can come back and teach you guys all the extra hacks that I've learned. At, for, for me being a coach and teaching people. So business credit, again, is built in five tiers, guys. It's five tiers of business credit. Tier one, two, three, four, and five. I know there have been several people that says there's tier one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. There is one way to build business credit, five tiers. Let me break those tiers down to you guys really quick. Tier one, net 30 accounts. This is for those who are starting brand new as a business. You already have a business. You have been in business for five years and you still have no business credit. For you not to PG, sometimes you have to go back to the basics in order for you guys not to PG things. A lot of you guys are PGing because you're rushing. Oh, I need a business credit card right now. I'm going to go to Wells Fargo. I'm going to go to Chase. I'm going to go to all the places that's going to ask you to PG it because your business is not ready for the business credit card. It's not ready for it. So your tier ones are net 30 vendors. I've dropped several net 30 vendors on my Instagram from Nav to Quill. Those are considered net 30 vendors. Okay. Tier two is retail. Retail, think of retail, but at the same time, when you're thinking of retail, also make sure that those vendors report. A lot of you guys are getting vendors that's not reporting. And then you go into your profile and you say, I have 20 vendors, but only two of them are reporting. That's because there's not vendors that's reporting. A lot of you guys are getting misinformation and it's unfortunate. I understand that. A lot of you guys are getting misinformation when it comes to vendors. Another thing, the Bosses Bill Business Credit ebook that I have gives you guys access to another group. It gives you guys access to a private group whenever there's changes with vendors because some vendors do report, then they stop reporting, they do report, they stop reporting. I come into my group and I let you guys know, for instance, Home Depot. The way, the best way for you guys to get Home Depot now is by doing their application. If ever you get declined from Home Depot, you can do something called a reconsideration. People are just not familiar with that because you guys are following 20, 30, 40, 50 different coaches that's giving you guys different information. But whenever you guys purchase anything from me, if it's a product, a course, I make sure I stay on top of the industry where I can come back in now and say, Hey guys, we have Home Depot in the Bosses Build Business Credit ebook, but here's Home Depot's new requirements. I stay on top of the game so you guys don't have to stay on top of the game. You guys should stay on top of the game anyways, but you guys understand what I'm saying. I stay on top of the game when it comes to building business credit to help my community to be able to take themselves to the next level. So tier two is what we considered retail, but you still have to be very careful. Some retails only report to Experian. Some only report to Equifax. Some only report to Dun & Bradstreet. Some reports to all three. Some reports every 30 days. Some report every 60 days. Some report every 90 days, right? Some reports every 120 days. So a lot of you guys grab these vendors and don't even know when they're reporting. So you're looking for a fast paydex score and you're not getting the paydex score because the vendor is not reporting the way that you thought that they were supposed to report. Retail. Tier three, gas cards, guys. Gas cards. Okay, we're looking at the Chevron, the Shells. 
So let me break tier three down a little bit more for you guys. Tier three is what we considered major, major gas cards. Shell, Chevron, BP, those players, those are considered major gas cards. If you can find a gas company in almost every single state, that's considered major gas cards. You cannot go to tier one to apply for a, a, a vendor like BP. BP would either ask you for a deposit or they will give you something like $100 versus waiting until tier three to apply for a vendor like BP that's going to give you twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in gas cards. If you guys have ever signed up for a gas card and they asked you guys for a deposit, that's simply because your profile was not strong enough to get that gas card. Or they ask you to PG it, your profile is not strong enough. Stop jumping past steps if you guys don't have to. You can literally get a paid X score in 30 days, not 60 days, not 90 days like people are telling you guys. You can get a paid X score in 30 days if done correctly. If done correctly, guys. Some of you guys have been in business now for six months and still don't have a paid, a paid X score. You don't have a paid X score because you don't even understand how to get a paid X score. Some of you guys are still asking questions like, what is a paid X score? Your paid X score is like your business credit score. There's nothing wrong with asking questions about your business to help you take your business to the next level, but allow the professionals to come in and professionally coach you guys. You have to allow us to professionally, professionally come in and coach you guys to help you guys down the right path. So your paid X score is your business credit score. Now, tier three, as we talked about with gas card, those are your major. Can you get gas cards in tier one? Absolutely. Those are gas companies that people are not even familiar with, that people didn't even realize was a gas company. Most people don't know that 7-Eleven is a gas card company because when you think of 7-Eleven, especially in New York City, you're thinking of like the bodegas, the 7-Eleven. There is no gas station attached to that. But in different states, some states, there is a 7-Eleven attached, there's a gas station attached to the 7-Eleven. So 7-Eleven gas card is a tier one gas card, right? Racetrack, racetrack is a tier one gas card. You have to know the difference in order for you to take yourself and your business to the next level. Tier four. Tier four are credit cards. Major credit cards, guys. The Wells Fargo, the Chase, the Bank of America. Those are major gas cards without having to PG it. A lot of you guys go and apply for Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America in tier one. You guys apply for that in tier one and then they ask you guys, to either PG it, now you gotta have good credit score, um, or they ask you for a, 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 a deposit. Don't do that. Build business credit the way that it was supposed to be built so in that way you can flourish in this industry. You can use literally utilize business credit to live your life. That's literally how I live my life. I live my life off of business credit. Business credit funds my entire life from my business credit cards, to my gas cards, to my Airbnbs, to my vehicles, getting it all under my business. It funds my entire life, okay? Buying luxury things, it funds my entire life because I'm in a position of being a coach to be able to know how to write these things off. I also have a great team behind me. My EA is amazing. She teaches me a lot of things. When I started learning about how to hire my daughter, I learned it from my EA. When I learned that as a business credit coach, anytime I step foot on a stage, I can write off my entire wardrobe. I learned that from my EA, which is an enrolled agent. They're different from a CPA. An enrolled agent and a CPA are two different people. Enrolled agents focus on tax deductions. So their, their goal is to stay on top of the tax law to make sure that all tax deductions that, that comes up, they're familiar with so they can help their clients. 
So there's a difference between an EA and a CPA. So make sure that you guys have a great team behind you guys that's leading you guys up down the right path to help you guys on this journey. All right. Now, can you get business credit cards in tier one? Absolutely. It's called fintech credit cards. Now, fintech credit cards, here's the difference with fintech credit cards. Fintech credit cards are what we consider fi um, financial tech credit cards. They basically look financial credit cards, I should say. They basically take a peek into your business bank account to see how much money you're making, and then they will give you a credit card based off of that. I have several fintech credit cards. There's links in my bio that you guys can click on on Instagram, and you will see business credit card that reports. You guys can apply for those as brand new businesses um, if you're making at least three to five thousand dollars a month. If you are not making three to five thousand dollars a month and you have the money personally to fund your business, write a check to the business every single month for three thousand dollars, three to five thousand dollars. Let it sit in your account, apply for your fintech credit card, get approved, and then take the money back out from your business because this is money that you lend to the business because you wrote that check that says owner's loan. There's hacks around everything, guys. You guys just have to pay attention. All right? Tier four, business loans. A lot of you guys from the very inception want to run to get business loans and you're not qualifying for them yet. So then a lot of you guys end up PGing business loans from the banks, from whoever. Hard money lenders. Tier five are business loans. Can you get business loans in tier one? Absolutely, right? But you want to do things like crowdfunding. What is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is basically people raising money on your business behalf to help your business take, it, take itself to the next level. You guys can do angel investors. The difference with angel investors, angel investors want to see that you have a business plan. If you do not have a business plan for your business, create a business plan for your business and then go after people like angel investors. You guys can also go to companies like Kava that does crowdfunding. Kava is very friendly when it comes to small business lending. That's K-I-V-A, Kava. They're very, very, very friendly when it comes to business lending. Another option is grants. A lot of you guys are like, grants are so hard to get. And that may be possibly be true. But if you do your research on grants and how grants actually works and what they're looking for, grants will become super easy for you guys. Especially if you guys have a nonprofit. Especially if you guys are like ex-felons. There are so many resources for people who are ex-felon that it's crazy that you guys are not excelling. You're only not excelling because you're not familiar even where to go. I've dropped several grants on my page about ex-felons, felons. I have so many people that's currently incarcerated that reaches out to me on social media and say, hey, I'm still incarcerated. Um, thank you so much for the gems. As soon as I come home, I'm going to be reaching out to you. Which to me is, is a little bit amazing, right? Because to see that these people are still incarcerated and then reaching out to me about uh, um, a reel that I did and you know thanking me for allowing them to be able to already see a future coming out of incarceration, it's a great thing. But you guys just have to stay on top of the industry. If you're not able to stay on top of the industry, Invest, 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 invest. Invest into a coach that's going to help you guys take your business to the next level. Now, that coach absolutely does not have to be me. I am not for everybody. Everybody is not for me. If you guys are following a business credit coach right now where you guys feel like this is the best coach for you, invest in yourself. It's not about investing in the coach. It's about investing into yourself. We can literally help you guys triple your business income. We have literally helped students go from zero to 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month because they have proper coaching. 
A lot of you guys want to get vehicles but don't want to invest in the vehicle challenge. A lot of you guys want to get Airbnb but not invest in the Airbnb challenge. A, lo a lot of you guys want to learn how to do business credit but not invest in the mentorship. A lot of you guys want to learn how to build business credit and not invest into the ebook. You have to invest into yourself in order to get yourself to the next level. Free information on social media, regardless of, and I'm, I can only talk about me as a coach. There's only so much free information that I can give out. Because the more free information that I give out, the more questions I get. Because people have no idea what I'm talking about. No idea. I will post a gem for you guys on social media, and people would ask me question, something as, what is a paid X score? I have no issues answering questions because that's why I post the free gems. I post the free gems to help you guys to be able to take yourself to the next level. Okay? So I really want you guys to, to stay focused on your journey when it comes to building business credit. The process is not easy, guys. Excuse me. The process is not hard. It only become hard when you allow it to be hard. The process itself is easy. Okay? The process itself is easy. What I'm going to do, you guys can actually start to drop questions in the question box. And I will answer questions for you guys for the next 15 to 20 minutes. All right? Let me go ahead and throw, put these comments back on. I'm not going to be reading y'all questions, but put... Um, you guys can put your questions in the question box. There's a question box listed at the bottom of this screen. You guys can put your questions in the question box, okay? Okay, let's see. Okay, so someone says, tier one vendors on Net30 ask for recommendations. I gave you guys some recommendations. I gave you guys some recommendations on this live. So you must have posted that question earlier. No worries. Okay, let's see. Um, when can you borrow against your life insurance policy? So that is, that's a good question. So when it comes to life insurance policy, there's a bunch of different options when it comes to life insurance. There's whole life, there's terms, there's infinite banking, which is whole life. So for instance, one of my policies is through infinite banking. The way that I'm doing my infinite banking is I have it set up where I knew I was getting ready to buy a house. So I basically put $100,000 into the policy so I can take that money back immediately. I don't have to wait to put the money back into my, to, to take the money out because it's money I invested. So what you want to do is depending, so life and regular life insurance versus infinite banking life insurance, the policy you have to just make sure it's set up properly. If you're going the infinite banking route, what you need to do is you need to get with the person that you're going to be doing the infinite banking route with and say, okay, I have one year before I decide I'm going to buy this house when it comes to infinite banking. So if you want to put $100,000 into that policy, if you have the money, put the money into the policy and you can take it out immediately. If you set a plan with your specialist that's doing infinite banking, what you're going to do now is you're going to fund that policy if it's $100, $500, $1,000, $5,000, depending on where your money is at, and set a plan with the person that you're going to be working with for the next three years or five years so you will know when to take out the money from your account. Okay? All right. Let me delete that one. Um, on the second month of both NAV accounts, do you delete the NAV account with the bit? Oops, sorry, somebody just commented and deleted, uh, disappeared that comment. Uh, let me try to find it back. Oh, there we go. On the second month of NAV account, do we delete the NAV account with the business email or personal email? No, you do not have to delete the account. You can leave the account as is because NAV is still a monitoring system for you. You just Take the payment off of the $39.99 and the $49.99 and allow NAV to still be a, a monitoring system for you, okay? Um, should I get an EIN to build a trust to funnel multiple business through? Okay, so um, trust, 
um, holding companies, um, regular companies. It's all different setup, guys. Um, holding companies, you have to actually have a company that you can hold the company in. Trust is a little bit different. I am currently building out my trust, so I'm not the type of coach that's going to give you information just to give you information. I will highly recommend getting with a professional that can help you guys. And I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to my team and I'm going to have them put together a class for you guys. So I'm going to have Brian come in and talk to you guys about infinite banking. Um, you guys met Brian. For those of you who was at my Dallas event, you guys met Brian. Um, Aaron, who is the CEO of Laughlin Associates, I will have him get one of his team member and come in and give you guys a Rockefeller breakdown, basically. Um, when you hear Rockefellers, you know, you're thinking like the big names. So I'm going to have him come in and give you guys a Rockefeller breakdown. So I'm, let me, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to put together two Zoom calls where my team can come in and educate my community on these things. Okay. All right. Let's see. How many tier one accounts do you need to move to tier two? Three. Three that's reporting to Dun & Bradstreet for you to get a paydex score, an 80 paydex score. Okay. Um, how long do you have to have a vendor's account to create a paydex score? And how do you verify you have a paydex score? Okay, that's a great question. And I actually talked about that in this live. So I want to assume that this is a question that you posted before because I talked about it in the live. Um, but just in case, I'm going to reiterate on that really quick. How long you have to have the vendor's account to create a paydex score? In my community, 30 days max. Most people tell you that you can get a paydex score in 90 days, 30 days max if done right. And then you said, and how you verify you have a paydex score. Everybody should have a Dun & Bradstreet account. That's how they generate the paydex score. The paydex score is generated through your Dun's account. NAV is a monitoring account. NAV monitors your paydex score, but you get the score from Dun & Bradstreet. So everybody should have a Dun's number, okay? Okay, uh, are, you still, are you still offering an in-person seminar here in Vegas? Yes, I am. I'm actually doing a five-city tour, and Vegas is going to be the last stop. So the first stop will be Atlanta. The last stop is Vegas. The city's in between. I'm still waiting to hear back more, um, more feedback from my community about where I'm needed the most. So it's going to start in September. I'm hitting Atlanta first, and then the last stop is going to be in Vegas. Um, which of your, which one of your books or courses covers everything? I am starting a brand new business. So, um, I would say my business credit blueprint, the business credit blueprint covers everything because now what I have in my business credit blueprint, I give you guys access to all of my eBooks that you have to pay for separately, except for, um, I want to say it's my vehicle ebook because I removed that entirely. I felt like the vehicle ve the vehicle ebook was very, very, very knowledgeable, but the vehicle course people get get more value. So I wanted to create something that's going to give people value. So if you're a brand new business, I would recommend the business credit blueprint because you get the business structure ebook, you get business credit ebook, you get um the net thirty hack ebook, you get there's a bunch of different ebooks that you get in that course. Plus, you get the course. Okay? Okay. Can you explain uh, next tier and is there a certain amount of money you need to spend each transaction? I don't, I don't quite know what you mean next tier, but I think you also posted that while I was talking because um, I explained that already. So, but I'm not sure what you mean by next tier. Um, how many reporting trade lines are needed before moving to, okay, I just said that. <laughs> okay, once you stop ordering from tier one accounts, do they stop reporting? No, they do not. Because that's like having your credit score. You get a credit score and because you stop using a credit card, you no longer have a credit score. It doesn't work like that. They, they, all you need is to report that one time. Once you report for you to get what you need, that's it. They're not going to go back and take away your paydex score. Okay. 
How do you build a higher experience business score? That is a great question. You need vendors that's going to report to, sorry, not experience, Equifax. You're going to need vendors that's going to report to Equifax. And I literally just dropped a video, a reel on, Exper on Equifax. So take a moment and go through that reel and see the vendors that I recommended. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Um, is a different state tour. Will that include your knowledge in the cannabis world or will that be separate? Thank you. So the five city tour, if I have everything in place for cannabis, then yes. If not, then it will be based off of knowledge of business credit, answering questions for you guys in person, vehicles, Airbnb, every single thing, buying land, buying everything that I do now. Okay. So I'm making no promises. Um, do you know about changing your address from personal to vert? Oops. Yeah, questions come. Where did that, where did that one go? Oh, there we go. Do you know about changing your, your address from personal to a virtual address with the Secretary of State? Yes. All you guys have to do is call, it's called an amendment. You need to send an amendment to the Secretary of State and the IRS. Is a form that you have to fill out just letting them know that your business address has changed. So I'm assuming that you meant your home address and you're trying to change to a virtual address. Yes. Send in the amendment or if you have an accountant, let your accountant, well, when they file taxes, the fastest way to do it actually is to let your accountant do it. So if you have an accountant or an EA, allow them to file your tax and stuff for you and then it will change the, they can change the information in the system. Okay. How do you change your personal car loan into a business loan? You have to refinance, okay? You have to refinance your car loan. You cannot get a refinance most of the time from the same company. For instance, if you have your business, your, your personal um, loan from Capital One, you cannot go back to Capital One to refinance. You have to refinance like with maybe Wells Fargo and maybe Federal or whoever. You have to refinance your account. Okay, let's see. Um, let's say I have a 800 number for one of my businesses, but I have multiple businesses. I have different extensions. Um, would I get a new number for each business or is it okay to use the different extensions um, for each business I may have? So it is okay to use a different extension because you guys have to understand when it comes to business, unless people know that I'm gonna look up her ticket vault, her truck and vault, um, uh, SPJ holding company, unless they know that you have multiple businesses, they won't know that the number is the same. So it's okay to use a number with different extension, uh, extensions. The only difference is that you cannot have like a voicemail because if you have a voicemail that says, thank you for calling her secret vault and they're calling uh, her trucking vault, it's kind of like, wait, am I calling the same company? Okay. Would you consider adding New York to your tour? Absolutely. You guys just have to let me know if that's a demand. If New York City is a demand, then I'll be there. Hello, is it better to use a bank or a credit union for your business account or do you recommend any? Um, I always recommend a credit union because the benefit of a credit union is much better than a bank. I love Navy Federal. If you guys do not know the hack to get into Navy Federal, you guys want to go over to THA Credit Lady um, page on Instagram or actually go to Creating Credit Bullies on Facebook and join her because uh, she does personal credit. Join her community and she has a video on a Navy Federal hack, how to get into Navy Federal. Okay, so that's Creating Credit bullies on Facebook, creating credit bullies on Facebook. Okay. Um, what to do if your pay decks disappear. So if your pay deck disappear, most of the time that's like a system issue. You want to contact down in Bradstreet and let them, um, let them know what's happening. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I may have missed it. Um, how much do you spend? Okay. So guys, um, I'm okay with questions, but if it's stuff that where we have to reiterate five or six times, um, I'm just going to skip past it and you guys can come back and watch the replay on YouTube once I post it on, on YouTube. Okay. I hope that's okay. Cause I want to be able to just get through everybody's questions. 
Um, can you can you be successful in the vehicle challenge if follow it correctly? If you are a brand new business, yes. Um, there's I'm not sure if my students are on here, but there's students on here who have vehicles um, as brand new businesses. Okay. Um, I'm trying to filter through these questions. Okay. Um, I watch your video on Amazon pay by invoice but I d but it didn't work could I be could I be doing something wrong with my business structure so there's multiple reasons as to why the Amazon pay by invoice did not work one is that they could be playing games with you two yes your business could not be structured properly three you don't have visibility so this is why I tell you guys always make sure that you guys get the business structure ebook before you guys try to do anything because if your business is not structured properly the game that I'm giving you guys is not going to work most of the times, okay? You have to structure them business properly. I do have a structured ebook in my bio. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to try to filter through some of these questions because some of it is the same questions or things that I've already talked about. So somebody said, what tier can you buy buildings with EIN? So it's not more so about tiers. It's more about capital, um, crowdfunding, things like that. You can buy a, a, a building immediately if you crowdfund the money to not PG it. So there's so many different ways. And that's a whole course that, um, I, that, that, that I need to teach, right? In order for you guys to understand that a little bit better. But not more so tiers, um, more about capital and structure. Um, you can do it like in tier five because now you're at the loan stage, but it's not more so about tiers. It's just more so about knowing how to do it in any tier. Okay, let's see. Um, easier to get vehicles or properties through no PG. I would say both, right? Um, but if you are new, I would recommend vehicles. Um, properties are a little bit different. You have to make sure that you have the proper corporation and stuff set up to put the properties in there. And then um, uh, for, if you guys are not familiar with hold, um, trust cannot hold corporations. It can hold LLCs. So you just have to know the in-depth game. But I would say, I guess I would say vehicles is much easier. But both is both is pretty easy if done right. Okay, how do I change my NIAC code and SIC code for Experian? The one they have is not does not um, supply. So great question, right? Sign up for an Experian account. Experian business account, go in and make the changes with them. You can also do it inside of your NAV account, so when they start to update your information, it updates, okay? Somebody say, thank you for answering my question, and I just wanted you to know that you are appreciated for all that, for all that you do, um, the, all that you do. Have continued to bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, and you are welcome. Um... I'm gonna just filter through this, guys, because some of it is things that we talked about, I've already answered. Um, can you be denied for high utilization with business credit? So I would say no. Here's why I would say no. Because it's really structured, guys. Have you guys went to the dealership or somewhere and they say you cannot get a vehicle because your utilization is too high? I'm sure you have right? Corporate leasing. I'm sure you guys have faced those problems, but that's only because you guys are not set up properly where when they look at your business, they're saying, okay, this is a person that has a legit, a legit business. Of course, they're using their business credit. So I would say yes, but that's not supposed to happen if it's done right. Mm, somebody asked this question. I cannot answer that on live. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, let me see. Hey, Lala. She said, Bestie, you are freaking bomb. You are the truth. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lala. 
Anytime somebody send me Bestie, that's always Lala. Um, I would love for you to be my coach. How do I get in touch? Um, so I have a coaching program. Right now, the coaching program is under construction because I need to change up of how change up my uh, topics on how I'm coaching you guys. A lot of people are getting results, but for me, sometimes it's a bit rough because a lot of people are coming in and have no idea when my coaching program was structured to help people who already have a business coaching business and want to take their business to the next level so i've j i have to restructure my business now to be able to help everybody even though i never turned anybody away from my program but i just need to set it up properly now or better i should say um if a person has a partner if a person if a person has a partner their business how does it work with building business credit? If a person has a partner, their business, are you talking about like having a partnership? If that's what you're talking about, it doesn't matter about the partnership, it's about the business, right? Own nothing, control everything. It's not about the partners. If you have multiple partners, it's about the business. You're building business credit for the business. Answered that already. Um, should I put multiple incomes through one business account um, and business EIN? So that depends. That depends. As a business owner, you should have several business accounts. For instance, Her Secret Vault has its main account. I have my tax account, which my accountant takes out taxes from. I have my Toro account where all my money for Toro goes into this account because that's the account that I'm going to be using to pay my car note, insurance, everything that comes with that comes with my Toro business. My Airbnb, I have um I have my Airbnb account under the same business because it's all operated under the same business, right? So my main account, my tax account, my Airbnb account, my Toro account and so on and so forth. Because you want to keep track of things like that. If you're paying your Toro bill every month and your account is a negative, you know you're not making enough money. You got to think outside the box. If you put the money into your main account, you don't know if you're doing good or bad unless you're tracking that. Same exact thing for your Airbnb. If my lights, my gas, my bills are coming out of my Airbnb account and my account is a negative, I know I'm not making enough account and I'm not, I know I'm not making enough money for my Toro account. So you can put multiple income through one business, just open different accounts. So her secret vault, I have my main account, I have my tax account, I have my savings account, I have another. So you can open multiple accounts under one business. Now, if you're talking about different businesses where you have her secret vault, her trucking vault, um, all the other, you cannot co-mingle funds. You cannot do that, okay? I'm saying okay like you guys can answer me back <laughs> okay let's see um, how do how can I get business credit or start the business credit from a business that generates low revenue so I actually talked about that in this live sorry I'm just filtering through I'm stuck at tier 2 rejected for retail vendors do I need to check Experian and Equifax what's reporting so there's multiple reasons as to why you should that you could be getting rejected for retail vendors I will recommend getting the ebook and going and joining that community because people can help you go past those steps okay So somebody said, I have been adding my business as an authorized user for my credit cards. Is that good? What do you mean adding your business as an authorized user? Sounds like, uh, is that personal credit cards? Because if that's the case, that's PG. And no, that's not good. My paydex score disappeared because I stopped actively working with vendors. Well, I, that's not what your pay this score won't disappear because you stop actively working with vendors. OK, 
Okay, I explained that already. When a vendor asks on my social, should I be just placing my EIN in the space? So, okay, yes. Whenever a vendor asks for your social, make sure that it's for identification purposes only. That's the only time you use your social. If you are not sure if it's for identification purposes only, give them your EIN. For instance, the gas, com um, gas cards. Gas cards now requires for you to put your social for identification purposes only. If you default, you do not, it doesn't fall back as a PG because it's for identification purposes only. So make sure that it's for identification purposes only. If you are unsure, put your EIN and for instance, the gas company will call you and say, hey, we're looking to extend you business credit, but it looks like your social and your EIN is the same number. We need to get your social. And that way now you say to them, well, I'm not looking to PG it. And then they will say, it's not for PG, it's for identification purposes only. Good question. When, uh, uh, oops. That was the same question somebody just asked. So guys, a lot of the um a lot of like tier one vendors and retail and net 30, those things are literally broken down in my ebook. Remember, we just talked about investing into yourself. You have to be able to put yourself in a position to win. Right? A lot of you guys are not putting yourself in a position to win. My ebook comes with a separate course. I'm sorry, it comes with a separate group. So for instance, a person that asks about not being able to go to tier two. Had you have been in that group and asked those questions, we would have been able to guide you through to get to tier two, okay? Because I don't want you guys to be stuck. Okay, let's see. Somebody said, what's coming next for your platform? I have watched you and wanted to know how you are adjusting to the changes in your business climax and what you suggest for followers. So I have so many different things coming, coming up because business credit is a world of different things, right? Um, I talked to you guys about the dispensary that I'm getting ready to go into more deeper for you, um, with you guys. Um, we're going to eventually be going deeper into buying land, into buying houses. Um, we're also going to be going into um, funding. Um, I don't talk much about funding right now because I give out a lot of free information on funding and things like that. But now I'm going to be becoming a source for you guys to be able to fund your business through, help you guys get funding, um, connect you guys with the right people for those of you who are looking to PG, right? I don't personally PG, but for those of you guys who are open, course my phone will be acting up right now let me see if you guys can still see me and hear me can you guys still hear me okay it looks like I'm good okay um, so that will be what's next sorry um, and what do I suggest to my followers stay educated stay on top of the game right stay on top of the game and follow coaches that's actually educating you guys Yeah, I answered that question already. So this person said, is this, um, is there a um, substitute for net 30 vendors? Would you recommend eCredible? So I just did a live on that, guys. That's what I tell you guys. I gave it a lot of free information, but you guys are not following the page put your post notification on i literally just did a live about a week a week and a half ago about e-credible so yes take a look at the live and yes i will recommend that can you apply for new vendors if you already have a balance owed on other vendors but then pay yes as long as it's not the same vendors but guys don't mess up your business profile pay the vendors 
Utilize OPM. I taught you guys how to, in tier one, I taught you guys how to pay for the vendors yourself. Tier two, pay for the vendors. Let the vendors pay for itself, I should say. Airbnb, uh, vehicle challenge. I'm, I'm teaching you guys how to let the vendors pay for itself. Do not default on these vendors. It can hurt your business. Can you dispute it? Absolutely. Somebody say, I wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. If you have a 60 score because missed payment, is there a way to get it up or, or that will take months? Yes, there is a way to get it up. First, you want to contact the vendors. Another thing that you want to do is you can actually dispute late payments inside of your NAV account that's going to push it out to all the other accounts. Inside NAV account back office, you can dispute. You can also dispute it with Dun & Bradstreet. You can say that you weren't late, but contact the vendor. Unless you're up to date with the vendor, you can contact the vendor and work something out with them. If not, if you are up to date, then just dispute it. So somebody said, trust, shell corps, offshore bank accounts, etc. Can you cover those things in in the in one on one mentorship? No, I do not do. I'm a business credit coach, guys. I'm a business credit coach. This is why I said I'm going to set you guys up with my team. Do I know this information? Yes. Am I knowledgeable on this information the way I am with business credit? No, I don't just do one on ones to take people money. I do one on ones that make sense. Hence why I said I'm going to put my team in place to come out and talk to you guys for free. Okay. Um, can a person who is in a bankruptcy right now build business credit and get funding for get funding for from your and tier? Okay, let me just decode that right business fund and get funding from your in business in their business name. Thank you. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying. Bankruptcy has nothing to do with business credit. We do not use our social in this community. We only use our social for identification purposes only. And identification purpose only has nothing to do with bankruptcy. They are just identifying that you are a real person. We do not use social in this community. Would you create a course for people that want to be in trucking? Yes, I actually have a trucking course. I actually took the trucking, the trucking course down, but I will be redoing the trucking course soon. Um, also inside of my business credit blueprint course, I had somebody come into that course and talk to you guys about trucking and dispatching. Okay. Um, blank Lala. So can I file bankruptcy on my first business? I messed up bad. What should I do? Close the company. Dissolve the company. None of my YouTube videos discuss tears. Um, my YouTube videos talks about hacks. Tears are in my ebook. I would love to link with you love to link up with you one day. I also live in Vegas and have properties in TV. Um, let's do lunch one day. <laughs> so I'm actually doing an event in Vegas. Um, so feel free to come out. Okay, I know personal credit is different from business, but do the same rules apply when it comes to disputing online? No, I just discussed that. So maybe you're asking that question afterwards. Hello and thank you, you're welcome. If the client tier two, can I apply right away? Um, yes, but you need to find out why you got declined. Most likely it's a business structure issue, your business, uh, you don't have the proper things in place, but find out why you got declined before you just jump into it. Okay, I answered that. She said, I know you give a lot of resources for felon, but is it harder for felons to build business credit? No. 
We're not using their social. We're not doing a background check. No, it is not. What do I do after companies that ask for my social for verification but ran the personal credit without my permission? So that's exactly what I'm talking about. You're not giving it to them for verification for identification purposes only. You're giving it to them for PG because yes, they can say um, I'm looking to do identification. Uh, we're looking to do identification purposes only. But companies are not going to put themselves in that position. You possibly were not familiar with why they needed your social and gave it to them and ran and they ran your social. There's a there's a few things that you can do. First, your your personal credit should always be locked and frozen. Anytime that you're giving your social for identification purposes only, your personal credit should be locked and frozen. I have my personal credit locked and frozen, right? Second thing is in the event that that happens, get with THA credit lady, dispute those uh, um, inquiries so that because she has a 24 hour inquiry removal that you can remove inquiries in 24 hours. Do I know how to do it? Absolutely. Do I do personal credit? I do not, but I'm connecting you guys with the right people that can help you guys. Um, are the multiple bank accounts necessary for new businesses not making money, making much? Um, so again, this is just suggestions for you guys. It is not necessary for you guys to do it all. Everything I'm giving to you guys is suggestions. It is not necessary for anybody to follow any of the information I'm giving to you guys. I have a sp small spiritual business. I'm ready to get it off the ground. Where do I start and how can I work with you? Um, so I will recommend the business credit blueprint to just make sure everything for the business is set up to start building business credit. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have to purchase a concern amount from net 30 accounts? No, you do not. Hi, would you, hi, oh. Um, blueprint is in my bio. The link is, all my courses are in my bio, guys. They will say business credit blueprint. She said, do you teach on how to start a hooker bar business? No, but it's the same exact way, right? Can I teach you how to do it? Absolutely. It's, it's the same exact way. Business is business, right? The only thing I would need to know is to, to tell you where to get your hookers from, how to set up the business, and that's super easy because I have so many different connections. Um... How would you get BMW to report to Dun & Bradstreet on a paid off biz, uh, on 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 a paid off business card? So your um, again, remember I told you I told you guys about which vendors report where, right? Vehicles and things like that, like your loan payment, should already be reporting to Dun & Bradstreet, right? If it's not reporting to Dun & Bradstreet, it should. If it's not and you paid it off. Use go back onto my onto my post and I did I dropped you guys some gems on eCredible, which is companies that you can upload your um your information into and it will help you to be able to get those um things reporting properly. You can also contact the lenders. You can contact Dun and Bradstreet. There's so many different ways for you guys to get for you to, not you guys but for you to get that vehicle to um report. Can you put EIN for a leasing office? Yes. That's corporate leasing. Does it matter how many inquiries? I talked about that before. No. When you lock and freeze your personal credit, do you still provide your social for verification? Yes, it's only verification. They're not doing a background check on you. The, the only time that 
They will need to get access to your credit report if they're doing a background check on you. They just need to your social to identify that you are a real person. And it has nothing to do with giving them a, to access to run your social. Um, does establishing business out of state complicate things? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have multiple businesses out of state. Absolutely not. I'm in Vegas. I have a business in Wyoming. I have a business in um, Dallas. I have a business in New York. Absolutely not. Um, is tier five business loans the same for loans on properties? We have three houses that we read out. Um, I would prefer not to use my social, my personal credit to pull um, equity. Um, so no, right? If you already have three houses, utilize the income from those houses from OPM if it's being rented out. Um, and start to do things like fintech credit cards because you should if you have rentals you have properties uh, money coming into the bank utilize fintech credit cards utilize also there's if you guys type in on google grants for um grants for um rental properties and things like that there's so many grants and funding for you guys you guys just don't know where to live I got approved for a gas card. How is it going to report on my business credit? Do you, do they report my, my credit line amount or my purchase amount? It depends. It depends on the gas card. It depends on where they're reporting. It depends how they're reporting. Um, it just, it just all depends. I don't know what card you have, so I can't really give you more information on that because I'm, I don't know which one you have. Do you have foreign entity for each business out of state? No, I do not. I do not. A lot of, <laughs> so foreign entity is only required for like certain states. They want you to be licensed in their state. And that's when you get a foreign entity, but I don't have any foreign entities. No. Uh, you are gorgeous. Thank you for everything you do. You are welcome and thank you. Um, is it easier to get grants to start my business? Yeah, everything is easy. I, I can't personally tell you that it's hard, right? Because I go above and beyond. Do I have to do work? Absolutely. Absolutely have to do work. Everybody has to do work. Everybody has to do work. But it's not hard. You just have to stick, the, stick to the course and do what you need to do in order to get yourself to the next level. Okay? All right, guys. So there was no more questions in the question box. I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys so much. I will be dropping this live on YouTube. As soon as I get it to convert, I will be dropping it on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys. Um, it will be on Facebook for about, not Facebook, sorry. It will be on Instagram for a little while until I convert it, but it will be deleted. Okay? I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys. As a reminder, Bosses Bill Business Credit. Talk to you guys soon.